James Gallo in the Golden West Trailer and Equipment Broadcast booth. We head downstairs for the Magri Coaches Show with assistant coach Curtis Perverzov. Uh, Curtis, kind of break it up a little bit. You guys got the start you wanted, right? Noah Dagenstein, Braden Yeager, uh, two early goals in the hockey game. A lot of life, a lot of jump in the legs. So just maybe talk about the first 10 minutes of the hockey game where it seemed like Moose Jaw was buzzing inside that Lethbridge zone. Yeah, I thought after the first couple of minutes, we really started to find uh, find our stride. I think we were obviously giving up too many shots in the first period, but um, you know we've got to capitalize on our chances. So really happy for a guy like Noah Dagenstein to get his first. And it was a long time coming. And obviously with the eggs coming back there, everyone knows what he can do with the puck. And he had his good looks tonight as well too. So um, we had some good moments there. Um, didn't execute a whole a whole lot throughout the game though. I think that ended up costing us. Do you feel as though as the game went on and Lethbridge maybe tilted the ice with their offensive zone puck management and mounting shots? That's what kind of stalled Moose Jaw's pressure and you weren't able to keep your momentum going? Yeah, you give give a team like Lethbridge credit. They were obviously able to make plays in the O zone. But, um, you know, I think for us, the disappointing part is just our puck management throughout the neutral zone and our depth in the O zone. I think when, uh, when we look back on this game, I think we're going to start to see that, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, D zone coverage time that we spend was because of our puck management execution in the neutral zone and the O zone. So uh, I think for us, that's where it starts. And, you know, obviously a lot of areas to clean up. Explain a little bit more on the neutral zone puck management. I thought early in the game, Moose Jaw had good rushes coming up the ice as the game went on, maybe not as smooth, and the entries weren't as clean as what we've seen, not only just early in this game, but throughout the course of the season. Dive a little bit more and explain to fans about the neutral zone puck management and how it stalls or stops Moose Jaw's rushes up the ice. Yeah, I think we, you know, like a lot of teams, they like to push the the neutral zone and send their forwards out to the to the blue line and uh, be able to stretch the zone out. And so for us, I think we were just forcing things, especially on entry. I think we're trying to go go through guys as around uh, as opposed to going around them. And you know, sometimes it's just chip and charge hockey and playing off the wall, um, which is the most effective. And so I think you know we got a little stubborn tonight with that and um, just started to force pucks rink wide and. Um, doesn't always work. And so I think when we start to do that, they pick the pucks off, away they go, and odd man rushes the other way. And we saw a fair share of that tonight. Yeah, they, especially the Wormald, Edwards, and Marcus uh, line. Somehow those guys can sneak behind and they just they find quiet ice up the ice. Uh, did you notice anything from the Warriors? Did you get too many guys caught up? How did the, that line end up with numbers up the ice? Yeah, I think that's something that uh, might be a little bit new for them, just kind of blowing the zone and taking off. And, um, you know, I think for us, especially our D-men there, we need to have alarm bells going the whole time. You see someone skating by, you make sure you turn around and start skating with them. And, um, you know, I think just half a second late to react to that. And, um, you know, those are all good players that can make plays. And when they're in behind you, it's dangerous. So, um, you know, we like I said before, we need to have alarm bells going off, making sure our depth in the O zone is strong and uh, minimize all those odd man rushes coming the other way. Great to have the captain back in the lineup, scores two goals. This is Braden Yeager. We saw the jump that he gives the lineup. Uh, another guy that maybe doesn't get a lot of press that I do want to ask you about is Brady Ness, right? Great tilt in the second period, blocked a fair number of shots here tonight. You know, he's a, he's a big guy. Just maybe talk about how you see his development as the season goes on. Yeah, I think for a guy like Brady, it's it's about playing quick and moving the pucks quick. I think, you know, it's, he's no stranger to uh, to getting in any scraps or you're blocking shots. He's, uh, he's willing to do it and um, it's something that we can trust him in those areas. And so I think just looking at a guy like that from last year to this year, it's just about puck movement, making sure he's playing faster. And um, you know, I think he's got a year under his belt. He sees what the speed's all about. He sees how quick four checks come. So, um, you know, big improvements from from Brady. And, you know, obviously a big fight like that, I think that gets our bench going. And um, it's obviously exciting to see. So, yeah, he's someone that uh, can block shots, play that physical edge. And, um, you know, he'll start to get his looks here too. Road trip ends tomorrow in Medicine Hat. That's two hungry teams, right? Uh, Tigers falling 6-2 in Red Deer tonight. Uh, both teams maybe not to the start of the season that they wanted. Curtis, how do you manage hunger with responsibility? So as you said earlier, not forcing plays that lead to turnovers against what is, again, a very dangerous Medicine Hat team. Yeah, I think they're going to have a lot of skill, a lot of speed, especially on the offensive side too. So um, I think we look at this game as a, as a perfect learning opportunity. I think we can review things that uh, didn't go so well for us, um, you know, throughout the game. And um, I think we're going to see a lot of that tomorrow uh, with Medicine Hat. So I think for us, it's just about being able to, to stick to our details, make sure that we're disciplined in those areas and um, capitalize on opportunities. So like I said before, can't be getting too stubborn and sometimes you have to play uh, play a structured game and, and that's going to lead to offensive chances. And uh, I think that's where we should find success tomorrow.
Magri Coaches Show with assistant coach Curtis Perberzov. Appreciate the time. Good luck tomorrow against the Medicine Hat Tigers. Thanks, James.